Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. If y'all would, find your seats. Um, I'd like to welcome y'all to the Peace River, Minnesota Regional Water Supply Authority Board of Directors meeting. It's August the 7th at approximately 9.31 a.m. in Sarasota County, Florida. Um, we have our commissioners with us today, myself, Commissioner Lankford. We have Commissioner Tseho from Charlotte County. We have Commissioner Bilden from Manatee, and I have Commissioner Moran with us from Sarasota. At this time, if y'all would, let's rise for the prayer followed by the pledge. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Lord, and we just thank you for all that you do for us, Lord. We thank you for uh, keeping your hand on us during this storm. And, uh, Lord, we uh, pray that this board can make decisions that would uh, uh, make you happy in taking care of the people that we serve and, the, and our customers that we provide this precious resource to. We ask that you lift up our men and women that protect us and serve us. Dear Heavenly Father, that you keep your hand of protection upon them as they do their best to protect us. We ask all these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Do we have anybody making host comments today? Good morning, Commissioners. For the record, Mark Cunningham, Assistant County Administrator. I'm here on behalf of County Administrator Jonathan Lewis and the Board of County Commissioners for Sarasota County. I want to welcome you to Sarasota County. Uh, Mr. Lewis is not here today to personally welcome you. As you can imagine, he is um, in the EOC working with the rest of the county leadership trying to restore some sense of normalcy following the uh, extensive flooding that we received from the rain events. So our hearts, our thoughts, and our prayers will goes out to those in the region who have been negatively impacted from this event. Otherwise, again, we welcome you and we um, hope that you have a great and productive meeting. Thank you for coming. Thank you, sir. Okay, under public comments, Mr. Brown Armstrong. Good morning. See some familiar faces for the record, Brian Armstrong, Executive Director of the Southwest Florida Water Management District. It's been a while since I've been down here. When I used to project manage the reservoir and the projects you built for the district, I was here monthly. Um, but that's a good thing. That means everything's going great. Uh, what I do want to do is uh, thank Mike. We've carried out a long tradition between the district and the authority where we work together collaboratively to build these large alternative water supply projects. It happened under Pat and it continued under you, Mike, and I'm sure Richard will do a fine job. I just wanna say thank you for continuing that tradition and being a part of providing what most people take for granted, and that's their water supply within these counties. You've done a great job, and really that's what I've come here to say. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Okay, public hearing for our budget. Uh, I'd like to open the public hearing and the presentation of the budget. Good morning, Mr. Chair, board members, Richard Anderson, authority staff for the record. Uh, we're here today to present the final proposed budget for the fiscal year 2025. Um, this is the uh, same exact presentation uh, with a few exceptions that Mr. Coates presented back in April for the tentative budget. So some of the stuff you'll see a second time. Uh, if you have any questions as I go through, please uh, don't hesitate to, to ask. Uh, the 2025 budget. Uh, similar to the 24 budget, is heavily uh, weighted towards capital improvement projects. The 24 budget had about 65% of the total expenditures uh, allocated towards the capital improvements. 2025's budget is even higher. It's 80% of the total budget is dedicated towards capital improvement projects this year. <clears throat> 
Some of our guiding documents that help us in the development of our annual budget, as you can see here, the uh, second amended interlocal agreement, which was amended in 2005, the uh, master water supply contract, which was amended in 2015, uh, the resolution for rate setting, the methodology for that was established back in October of 2005, and we update that each year as part of the budget process. Uh, the other uh, factor that works into play here with our budget, of course, is the um, utility reserve, <coughs> excuse me, utility reserves and bonds. Uh, we have to make sure that uh, we factor in funds to cover uh, the bond covenants and bond resolutions and things like that to make sure that we are in compliance with all the requirements for the bond. A couple other uh, items that drive the budget obligations, of course, is meeting our contractual obligations for water supply. Uh, we need to meet the uh, 34.7 allocation for water supply that's identified in the master water supply contract, as well as meet your demand projections for this year, for 2025. And that is uh, this year, 32 million gallons a day is projected between the four customers taking water from the authority. Uh, we always strive to, to run an efficient, cost-effective operation, and that means maintaining the equipment in the appropriate fashion that it deserves, uh, spending money adequately on uh, not only R&R &R for major improvements, but routine maintenance, keeping all the pumps and the equipment running as they should, replacing things as needed, and uh, also planning for long-term water demands uh, going towards into the future. Um, one of the core values, of course, for the authority is financial stability. And this 2025 budget uh, does support that effort. Uh, we are working hard uh, as we speak to secure funding for these long-term projects and do uh, long-term financing through bonds and possibly using WIFIA in the future for, for funding these future projects. Here's a quick look at the budget calendar. As I mentioned, uh, we started back in February 7th. Uh, Mr. Coates presented... Uh, Highlights of the budget considerations for the coming year. Uh, again, majority of that was focused on the CIP and uh, our spending coming up here in 2025. Uh, the board adopted the tentative budget on April 3rd, and we're here today to seek your approval uh, for the final budget uh, here on, on August 7th, of course. Uh, in between, we've had several professional staff meetings where we've had the opportunity to go over the budget with your staffs. Uh, that was... Um, the May meeting and the July meeting. We've, as I mentioned, we've had no comments on the budget from staff, and what we're presenting today is the same budget that you approved back in April. Uh, just a little bit about the authority structure. Uh, we are an enterprise fund. Um, we do collect funds through water sales from our five customers. We do not levy any taxes to support any of the activities of the authority. Uh, the Enterprise Fund is split up into two groups. Uh, as you can see here, the administrative, which includes everything to do with Lakewood Ranch, the salaries, the rent, the uh, everything to do with keeping the, the administrative side, HR, running smoothly up at Lakewood Ranch. The facilities side is everything else. That's what it takes to run the plant, pay the salaries of all the staff at the facilities, chemicals, power, maintenance, everything to do with running the facility and producing water. Here's a look at how those two uh, buckets break down. As you can see here, the administrative office for 2025 is pr uh, proposed at about uh, $608 million, which is less than 1% of our total budget. The remaining $255 million uh, is all dedicated to facilities and, as you'll see in a little bit, towards capital improvement uh, expenditures. Before we get to the actual budget, I just want to show real quickly the, the breakdown of the water allocations for each member. You've seen this before. Uh, we have a 34.7 allocation in total at the Peace River facility. As you can see, about 90% of that, exactly 90% of that, is used by the Sarasota County and Charlotte County. The other 10% is comprised of Northport and DeSoto County. These allocations, uh, as you'll see in a minute, drive the share of fixed costs that's applied to each customer and how they pay for their share of the facilities and the authority uh, base rate. So I'm going to go through that a little bit here in just a second. Here's a quick look at the water rate components. Our water rate is made up of, of two components. It's a base charge, 
which I said is based on the allocations that you have in the facility. Uh, for example, Charlotte County has a 16.1 allocation out of the 34.7, which is 46% of the capacity in the facility. So they pay 46% of the fixed cost in the budget each year. So when we allocate new capacity, which hopefully will, will come soon, uh, these numbers will change and the percentages will be adjusted accordingly. There's also a water use charge. That's the charge based on the actual metered use of your water. It's how much you buy from us on a daily basis. And we meter that monthly and then that is added to the, to the bill based on your actual usage. Here's a quick look at our sources of revenue. As you can see here, there's 2024 versus 2025. Uh, the water sales for 25 are projected to be up about 1.4 million, going up from uh, 44.3 to 45.7 million. And as you can see, the CIP funds, this is the big driver, as I mentioned, they're up $92 million between 2024 and 2025. And this includes borrowing for both the pipeline projects and the surface water expansion program that we're about to embark on. Grants are also up for this year. As you can see, we had 51 million, <clears throat> excuse me, in grants in 2024 and over 73 million in grants for 2025. The other buckets, as you can see, we have reserve funds. Those include internal transfers to funds like the R&R &R or the uh, rate stabilization fund. Those are, uh, those are uh, about the same, a little, little less this year, about $300,000 less than, than with last year. And then finally, we have carry forward, and that's just exactly what it is. It's carry forward of funds that were unspent from 24 that are carried into 25 to be used uh, in the fiscal year 2025. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Uh, okay, it's on. Um, I think on slide seven, I heard you say administrative costs were six hundred million. I think that was. Did I say six hundred million? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure for the record, it's not six hundred million. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. That'd be a big administrative cost. <laughs> okay, here we are. Uh, this is a quick look at that base rate, historical base rate, going back to 2021. Um, as you can see, it's, it's up slightly. It's, it's increased about 7% uh, over the last four years. Uh, this year, the base rate's up 2.8% only, about a little under 3%. And uh, that's kind of driven by we're seeing some softening a little bit in the, in the uh, uh, inflationary rate. Some of the chemical prices have stabilized a little bit. As you can see, between 23 and 24, we had a pretty healthy jump of about 9%, driven mainly by chemical and electric costs going up. Um, but this year, we've, we've gotten good news that some of the chemicals have renewed, and there's not going to be quite as many increases coming uh, for 2025. So let's kind of look at the historical base rate charge for you. Here's a look at the water use charge, and this is kind of breaking it down, uh, both the base rate actually and the water use charge. You can see this is by customer. You can see the base rate charges. As I mentioned, 90% of the budget is, is held by Charlotte and uh, Sarasota County for the, for the uh, overhead and fixed costs. So obviously the majority of the expenses for the base rate are applied to, to those two counties. Um, the water use charge is up from $1.09 or proposed to be up uh, to $1.13. That's about a 3.5% increase, 3.8% increase to uh, one thirteen. And then you can see here the historical water use charge increase. Uh, similar to the base rate, we had uh, about uh, 3 or 4% increase, 21, 22, 23. Then we had to jump it up here in 23 to 24 to cover some of those costs that we're seeing increasing in chemicals and electric and so forth. Again, this year we're looking at base or, uh, water use charge of $1.13. Some of the other assessments and fees that are part of the budget, uh, one is the member fee. This is assessed uh, based on 
each customer's pro rata share of the four county population. And then also include, well, it's actually divided by four, uh, half of it's divided by four e equally among the members, and then the uh, rest is based on the pro rata share of the population. And that's up slightly 41,800 for the, for the year. The planning assessment is based strictly on population. This is the one that is based solely on the pro rata share of your population within the four county region. This number is not proposed to change. It did adjust slightly among the members, of course, based on population changes within, within the four county region. Now a little bit of uh, a snapshot on some of the major expenditures. As you can see here, the 2024 budget was $141 million. Proposed 2025 budget, almost $256 million. Again, the majority of that driven by the CIP. As you can see, the, the CIP was about two-thirds or 65% in 2024. This year, we're looking at about 80% of the budget being driven by the CIP. O&M is only up about $2 million from 27 to 29. Uh, debt service remains the same. Uh, the other category, which includes some of the, uh, the funding for R&R &R and planning assessment and the, the uh, member fee, uh, has actually dropped about a million dollars. And then county payments are just that. That's our refunding of the county payment each year. We, we collect funds in 2024 to help us cover uh, debt service coverage and bond covenants and things like that, then we refund it back to you in 2025. So it's kind of a pass-through each year. Some other budget highlights. Um, O&M, a uh, cost increase about 3% for this year. Uh, personnel compensation is up 7%. And as a reminder, that was approved back in June to uh, include that in this final budget, and we appreciate that on behalf of staff. Uh, we also have three new positions planned for 2025. Uh, this is going to help us get through the construction phase and final design of all these capital improvement projects. We need another project engineer, construction inspector, and then we're going to expand some services in the lab and add a lab technician. Uh, repairs and maintenance only increased about 2%. Contract services are up 18% or almost $500,000. That's driven in part by the CIP. We're going to need some extra help from consulting firms with uh, inspection services and some other activities related to the, to the project. So we're going to ask for some more funds in that category. And then machinery and equipment is up 50,000. It's 25 percent, but it's only 50,000. That's to cover some new equipment in the lab that will be used by that hopefully new lab technician that we're going to hire. Some other uh, rate-related expenditures, of course, contributions to R&R. &R. This year, that's $4.5 million. Uh, transfer funds from the CIP into the regular account to actually pay the bills. Um, transfer to the system-wide benefit projects, as well as the disaster recovery fund. And here's a look at the, uh, the CIP for 2025. As I mentioned, expenditures are about $200 million. 126 million of that is coming from authority funds, and about 73 and a half million is coming from grants and other sources, Swift Mud and, and state grant funding. Uh, we also have one system-wide benefit project. That's the partially treated ASR project. Uh, that is uh, fully funded by a state grant from FDEP, and we expect to spend about $500,000 of that money this year. And finally, debt service coverage. Um, this is a fund I mentioned a few minutes ago where we collect funds in 2024 and we return it to you in 2025 to help us with that debt service coverage on bonds and covenants. And that's $1.5 million for, for the year for 2025. And when you roll all that up, you can see the impact of the CIP on the budget. Uh, the orange is O&M and the, uh, the blue is non-O&M uh, costs. As you can see, they're fairly flat for the last five years, um, but the CIP is what's driving our budget, and uh, we expect it to remain that way through at least 2027 or 2028. So um, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. 
board members, do you have any questions? Well, I don't see any questions. I think, uh, are we looking for a motion at this point? Or we, we have a public hearing? Yeah, we, yeah, we still have to open it up. Here. Yeah. No further questions by any board members? Any public comment? Okay. Seeing none. Do I hear a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close public hearing. Second. Have a motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Motion to approve the budget for FY 2025 in the amount of two hundred and fifty five million eight hundred ninety six thousand four hundred and eighty two dollars. Okay, have a motion by Commissioner Sayo, um, seconded by Commissioner Moran. Any discussion? Hear none. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion to approve resolution 2024 uh, 2024-07, resolution setting forth rates, fees, and charges for FY 2025. Okay, have a motion and a second. There's no discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Excellent. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you, Richard. Okay. Well, next we have our consent agenda. Um, is everybody good with that? Anything more to be pulled or we're good? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. Move consent. Second. Okay. Have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion carried unanimously. Okay, regular business agenda item um, number five has been moved to agenda item number one. We're trying to get some of the stuff done here so that uh, um, um, we can get this deal moved on in case we have to lose a commissioner because he's got other pertaining business to our storm. So with master supply, excuse me, master water supply contract revisions. That would be Mike. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mike Coates with authority staff. Uh, this is the Master Bar Supply Contract Revision Update. Uh, we last talked about this at the June 5th meeting, and uh, we've got some, uh, some news to go through on this uh, and some, some changes uh, that we're proposing. <coughs> Uh, the structure of the of the presentation we'll go through a little bit of background uh, some of that you've already heard so I'll, I'll move through that pretty quickly uh, we've got changes to uh, master water supply contracts exhibits B C and F those are the allocation portions of the master water supply contract so those are the, the forms that are required to be changed when we allocate new capacity um, we got the master water supply contract proposed changes to the DeSoto payment to go through, uh, and then we'll have some discussion on that. The project that we're talking about to allocate the new capacity from is, is shown here, surface water system expansion project, a uh, new 9 billion gallon reservoir and all the appurtenances that go with that, and a 24 million gallon a day expansion of the water supply uh, treatment capacity at the Peace River facility. Uh, that project will yield 18 million gallons a day of average day capacity uh, for the region. We have been working on this project really since uh, 2020, and you can see where we are uh, right here on this, uh, on this timeline. Um, we are in final design uh, with the reservoir project, so the, the reservoir portion of that project. Uh, we have a construction manager at risk that's working on the, uh, the pipelines that connect all of that, the pump stations that, uh, that go with that project, uh, and they are, uh, they are in full design on that. Uh, we've also got a contractor, uh, design build contractor selected uh, for the uh, Peace River facility expansion, that 24 MGD expansion, and they're working on the design. All of that is pushing toward uh, getting information on the cost for these projects 
uh, by the spring of 2025. Uh, so we're, we're working toward that uh, and trying to meet that date. One of the things we have found recently uh, is that uh, in discussions with contractors is that the lead time for some of the equipment that we have uh, for these projects, especially the electrical equipment, uh, is up to three years uh, for a lot of the electrical equipment. So it's important that we move on getting the contract uh, executed, the changes to the master water con supply contract ex executed, because in order for us to meet a 2028 delivery time for water from these facilities, uh, we're going to have to order equipment early uh, for this project. So let's talk about uh, exhibits C, B, and F uh, in the master water supply contract, uh, and then we'll follow that up with the DeSoto payment. This is exhibit C. This is new water supply demands, and this is the water, new water that customers are requesting from the authority uh, in addition to what they've already got allocated from the authority. You heard Richard talk about that 347 million gallons a day that's already allocated. This will take, uh, take our capacity up to 52.7 million gallons a day. So it allocates that additional 18 million gallons a day. And you can see the allocations proposed here. Charlotte's requested three, DeSoto one. Um, Sarasota has requested 12. And we're going to talk a little bit about this 12 to 14 and the City of Northport's two or zero uh, here in just a second. But um, the City of Northport has indicated that they're interested in taking two million gallons a day from this project, uh, but they have to, to develop an agreement with the uh, developer, um, uh, Welland Park. And uh, so they're, they're working on that. Whether they'll be able to, to resolve that or not, we aren't sure, and so what we've done in this table is indicated that they think they're going to take two, but if they don't, they default to zero, and their two goes to Sarasota County. So Sarasota County, we go from 12 to 14, and that will be included in this table uh, that we send out, presumably if uh, we get uh, permission to do that. That will be included in this table. They'll have until the middle of November uh, to, to let us know on their decision, whether they're in or not. And if, they, if they're not in, um, then the, uh, the water goes to Sarasota County. Uh, we've got to bring this back to the board in December um, in order to stay on track. So hopefully we can get everybody to approve these, these uh, contract changes, bring it back to you in December, and, uh, and then move on the project. So that's Exhibit C. Exhibit B simply rolls up your current allocation on the Peace River facility and the new water capacity that, uh, that you've requested in Exhibit C. And you see the same changes here. So um, Sarasota County right now has 15.06 million gallons a day. Uh, they're going up with Exhibit C. Uh, up to a total of 27 million gallons a day uh, if they get 12 MGD from this new project. Or if they get 14, they would go up to 29 uh, million gallons a day. Mr. So, Chair? Uh, those are the changes. They just ripple through, uh, through My, Exhibit B. Hold, hold yes. on one second. I have a question for you. Right. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, on the arrangement with Northport, if they don't take the 2 million, Sarasota County has already determined that their needs are 12 million. Uh, gallons per day they're willing to take on the responsibility of an additional two million because they'll be responsible for that they have indicated that um, what uh, what their board approved was uh, they would take up to 17 million gallons a day from the project if nobody else wanted okay. that they would take whatever's left okay thank you mr. chair So those are changes in B and C. Uh, exhibit F uh, is uh, the, the cost allocations. And you see uh, the capacity um, indications here. Uh, Charlotte's got 3 MGD of the 18. 
16.67. DeSoto's got a little over 5%. Uh, Sarasota uh, and Northport, again, if Northport takes that two, uh, they're, they're at 11%. If they don't take the two, uh, then it goes to Sarasota County. So those are, those are the changes that were proposed uh, for Exhibit F. Those were all discussed with the, uh, the administrators. Um, the, the administrators were, were fine with, uh, with this, this process and, and structuring it this way. So let's move on to Exhibit A, the DeSoto payment. Um, this is a payment that's made to DeSoto County. It's uh, for better or worse, it's called a, you know, it could be called a payment in lieu of taxes. Uh, but it is included in the master water supply contract uh, as a requirement, uh, and it's based on the permitted capacity of the, the water uh, treatment facilities. And the permitted capacity of those water treatment facilities has gone actually from 34.7 million gallons a day to 80 million gallons a day, uh, and that happened in 2019. <clears throat> and so the contract says that we will readdress the DeSoto payment uh, when that happens. Uh, we didn't address it in 2019 um, because we knew we had water supply, new water supply that would be needed to be coming online, and so we are addressing it now as that new water supply capacity is being allocated. <clears throat> this is the current Exhibit A, and it's based on currently 34.7 million gallons a day allocated pro rata uh, to the $796,000 DeSoto payment. So everybody has a pro rata allocation in that. Um, that's the current uh, way that, that Exhibit A is developed. The contract methodology, of course, indicates that when the water use permit increases, <clears throat> we readdress that. And so when the water use permit increased in 2019 to ADMGD, uh, there was also a consideration from uh, DeSoto County that we, we look at a cost adjustment uh, to that, uh, like for inflation or some other purpose, and uh, out to 2036. So we will, uh, you know, we'll go through that here in just a second. So recent discussions on Exhibit A uh, at the April 3rd board meeting, uh, we had a staff presentation. We proposed a DeSoto payment methodology. There was some concern on the part of the board that the payment amount, which was a proposed at that time to be 2.8 million, starting at 2.8 million, um, was, a, was too high and that there was an inflation escalation essentially forever on that. Um, and that that was somewhat, uh, somewhat problematic. Uh, the recommendation was to convene the administrators and try and work through that, uh, work through a solution on Exhibit A. Uh, we did convene the administrators on May 17th. Um, the administrators proposed the DeSoto payment increase start in 2026, uh, and that's what you're going to see here. Uh, they proposed a cap of $3 million uh, for the DeSoto payment in 2036. Um, there was also a proposal that all members and customers contribute to the DeSoto payment. That was not a unanimous uh, uh, decision, but uh, it was something that they, they suggested to be brought to the board. I think we made great progress at that meeting, but there really wasn't consensus. And so we came back to the board on June 5th. Um, the board was in general agreement on the payment increase beginning in 2026 and up to $3 million cap, the $3 million payment cap. Uh, there was a lot of discussion on Manatee's contribution since they don't receive water yet. And so we went back and reconvened the administrators uh, and we met on August 1st. And so today we have a consensus proposal from the administrators on Exhibit A with all member and customers partic participating in that and a consensus proposal on Exhibits B, C, and F, which we just talked about. So let's talk about the Exhibit A methodology. 
The methodology that the, the administrators uh, have recommended is that the Minnesota payments start in 2026 because Richard just presented the 2025 budget and it's not increased in there. So 2026 would start at $937,500. There's a gradual increase up to $1.95 million in uh, 2028 and then another gradual increase between 2029 and 2036 to the $3 million cap. The contribution split, you can see here, 2026 to 2028, 50% between all four members, 50% by pro rata capacity allocation in the Peace River facility. Uh, but that 50% between all four members is tempered by a gradual increase <coughs> to Manatee County through 2028. So Manatee County's increase from 2026 to 2028 is less than, uh, than the others, uh, recognizing that they, they don't uh, get any allocation yet in the Peace River facility. From 2029 to 2036, the total increase of 1.5 million or 1.95 million to $3 million, um, split equally between all four members. So all of that increase is split between the members. The pro rata, the pro -rata capacity change remains constant uh, in this. And when we roll all that up, uh, this is the table that we come up with. You can see 2024 and 2025, no change. That first three years, 2026 to 2028, um, that 50-50 split with manatees uh, is a little, little actually a half of what, what it would be otherwise. Um, and then manatee goes in 2029 to uh, the full share uh, that they have and uh, expecting a 5 million gallon a day uh, capacity allocation that they would request to be online by 2036. So, um, that's how this is structured. Uh, this, is, this has been uh, very much an iterative solution to uh, this, this process. And, um, you know, the, the administrators, I think, have been very helpful uh, in, in helping to, to develop this. Um, so that is what we're proposing uh, for Exhibit A. And uh, what we're looking for in the next steps courses well we'll talk about the the uh, we talked about it today uh, we want to to send out these changes uh, to the customers for their approval these would go out along with the changes that have been worked on for the last two years in the master water supply contract cleaning up the contract cleaning up the outdated language and all of that so they would go out uh, in that form um, <laughs> for action by all of the authority customers. We'd expect to bring a progress report back to the board in October. Uh, we really do need uh, decisions. Uh, we need uh, hopefully approval uh, of all of this by November 15th. Uh, Northport's got to get that decision on capacity, certainly by November 15th, in order to come back to the board uh, at the December 4th meeting and have this board approve the third amendment to the master water supply contract. So questions, discussion, I do have a motion after this, but we can. Board members, any questions? Yeah, Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Yeah, I would just like to thank the respective county administrators and staff that worked on this. I mean, when you have language that talks about readdressing, it's pretty vague and nebulous, <laughs> so it kind of, leaves it wide open and to to get to this point um, a lot of work went into it to uh, come up with these different schedules um, I'm, I'm glad to see that uh, it appears at this point manatee is participating uh, in the process which I think is, is really good for all the members to to have us participate in that way so thank you mr. chair thank you anybody else okay all, all right um, this is an action item the motion here is uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and make a motion mr. Right. chair go ahead uh, to approve the third amendment to the Peace River Minnesota Regional Water Supply Authority master water contract uh, master water supply contract and authorized transmittal 
of the Third Amendment, including exhibits to the authority customers for approval by their respective county and city commissions. Okay, have a motion and a second. Any any more discussion? Hear none. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Okay, Thank that moves much. us to um, agenda item number four, which will be our second agenda item. That's Miss Ann. Good morning, board. Ann Lee of your staff. I'm just going to briefly introduce Miss uh, Natalie Sidor with Prague. She's the authority's um, financial advisor. She's going to review the 2014B bond refunding as well as the Phase 3C final financing. We also have uh, Tom Giblin, the authority's bond counsel, with us today for any questions that you guys have for the documents, the exciting part of your reading. <laughs> Good morning, Natalie Sador uh, with Prague. Um, I'm just going to provide a brief update on the authority's upcoming bond transaction. Um, and then as Ad mentioned at the end, we will be requesting board approval of the related bond resolution. We're planning to issue series 2024 bonds in two series. The first series is to refund the authority's existing series 2014 B bonds. It's a very straightforward refunding. Um, we're looking at savings as of about a month ago of about six and a half million dollars. That's probably up a little bit. Rates have come down a little bit over the past month. Um, but it's very straightforward looking at the same structure as the 2014 B bonds. So this is a a, a very straightforward refunding. Right now we're looking at rates in the low threes for this piece. Um, and again, that, that produces the savings uh, that we're estimating at six and a half million dollars. The other piece is our series 2024 B bonds. This will fund 43 and a half million dollars, <throat> excuse me, of the phase three C pipeline project with Sarasota County. We're looking at a 30 year term for these bonds level debt service with interest only for the first three years. So principal payments will begin on this piece in 2028. Right now, um, as of a month ago, these rates are more in the, the low fours, again, because of the longer term versus the refunding um, annual debt service of about two and a half million dollars. So today we will be requesting your approval of the bond resolution. We're looking to price these bonds the end of August, early September. We'll be monitoring the market so that we can enter the market at the most uh, optimal time with a closing and funding of these bonds on October 1st. Uh, and with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Board members, y'all have any questions? Okay. Right, just a motion for your consideration. Um, I know this does have a very long resolution name, but we did not include it in the screen. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't I don't think I've ever seen a motion this long in my life. Well, you but. can thank Mr. Giblin for the okay. length of the resolution <laughs> okay. name. Right. Ken, would it be safe to say that we could make the motion as presented in the board packet or do you need it read out? That'd be fine. Okay, <laughs> I got a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, huh? That would have been Mr. Gibbon we would make reading. Okay, I got you. I got you. All right, um, I need to go to... Um, let's see, Chairman's Report. It'd be, um, if I can find it here. Mr. Chair, I've never had an agenda. I feel like we're working backwards. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. Well, we, 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 we're trying to put the important stuff up first. And, I, oh, I know where I got it. Have y'all got it in y'all's book? Yeah. Okay. All right. There it is. Okay. All right. Here we go. Okay. Um, I get to be the presenter, so I'm just going to sit right here instead of going to the podium. But this basically, gentlemen, is the uh, employment agreement for the executive director with Richard Anderson. Oh, it is. 
Yeah. Yeah, I've got yeah. it. And then we have uh, another one is the amendment to employment agreement for executive director of Mike Coates. Um, if y'all all had a chance to read over it, look at it. Are there any questions? Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Yeah, in, in reading through it, my understanding is that this agreement's consistent with, with what we've had in the past. So, Mr. Coates, can you just confirm that? Yes, I can confirm that. It's, it's consistent with what we've had in the past. Uh, there is some language changes regarding the, the salary. Um, just to clarify for FRS what is considered salary in this position and Doug can explain that further if you need it that's correct I clarified the language as FRS has some issue which we did the letter on on ele employee elected deferred compensation so I just clarified that the executive director and the senior advisor both are using that money the deferred compensation money as employee elect money uh, FRS makes a distinction between a bonus from the employer versus an employee elected um, determination on salary. So I just clarified that and added more language. So, Mr. Chair, just for clarification, so the base salary is $181,500? That's for the executive director, yes. Okay. <coughs> mm -hmm. You mentioned bonuses? It's not a bonus. That's the issue. But I'm clarifying with FRS, it's not a bonus. Okay. The, it's a deferred compensation, employee-elect deferred compensation, which gets treated differently by FRS than if it's an employer bonus. Okay. In other words, you get FRS retirement benefits for an employee-elect deferred compensation. You do not for an employer bonus. Right, so his FRS will be based on that salary that I just... It's based on... And, and increases as they go. It's based on that salary and the deferred compensation amount. That's correct. So the deferred compensation amount is the maximum allowed by the IRS, and it varies year to year. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, it literally varies every year. It depends on the age of the person, and it depends on uh, several different provisions in there. So I can't estimate what it would be. Okay. Any other questions? I mean, yeah, if you estimated range would be like 20,000 to 40,000. Yeah, and that's if you're in that catch up provisions of the 40,000. Okay, gentlemen, y'all no, no further questions or if y'all still deliberating, if not, I'll entertain a motion. Yes, sir. Just for clarification, Warren Chairman's report, uh, agenda item number one in the packet under executive director transition. This would be 1A and B, motion to approve the employment agreement for executive director with Richard Anderson, which is 1A, and 1B is the amendment to employment agreement for executive director with Mike Coates as presented in our packet. Okay. I have a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Motion. Yeah, Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, on Item B, um, with the amendment, um, can you just clarify, Mr. Coates, on that? I'll clarify, if you don't mind, since I drafted the contract. The idea is that you can't have two executive directors at the time, so we're changing his title to senior advisor. Right. He'll be leaving the uh, authority on October 2nd, so this contract you know, basically takes him to October 2nd as a senior advisor. And then I made the retroactive portion about the deferred compensation, be able to clarify that with FRS. Yeah, we, we talked about that in our one-on-one -on -one discussion. I just wanted to make sure that, you know, the public understands how that transition works and your position going forward. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. All right. If there's nothing else, I'll enter, uh, enter all in favor. We've done got a motion to say it. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed like sign. 
Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations, Richard and Mr. Coates. You're, you're a senior now. He, he just confirmed with his wife to book the cruise tickets. Uh, yep, yep, Unfortunately, yep. I've been a senior for a while. <laughs> hey. All right. Okay, let's go to agenda item number four. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, agenda item number four, but it's the old agenda item the number three. three. Yeah, see? <laughs> yeah. See, I can't, I even, told I you. can't even keep up. Yeah. <laughs> it's all had, backwards. Yeah. You already had the important stuff up front, so yeah. I'm here at yep. the tail end. Yep. <clears throat> all yours, Mike. Thank you. Uh, good morning, members of the board. Mike Knowles with Authority Staff presenting regular agenda item number three. This is the Southwest Florida Water Management District Fiscal Year 2026 Cooperative Funding Initiative Applications. There will be a motion at the conclusion of this presentation requesting the authority's permission to, or the permission for the authority to submit the cooperative funding applications at the ranking that's currently in your books for the projects. The cooperative funding initiative applications are important for two reasons. One is uh, very obvious that we've been fortunate to get funding, matching funds in the amount of $178.4 million from the district on three of our current capital projects. The other thing this application does for us is, on our behalf, the district forwards our application for consideration with the Alternative Water Supply Grant Program through FDEP. And because of that relationship and forwarding our applications, the authority has received $14.05 in grants through that relationship as well. So the application serves a dual purpose. Uh, these are the four projects that the authority would like to submit for CFI applications. I'll cover these four in uh, regular agenda item number two for the projects update, but three of these projects already have funds earmarked by the district for uh, matching funds. Going over the budgets for the project, the phase 2B pipeline currently has 36.15 million uh, earmarked for the project and matching funds with 1.5 million from the alternative water supply funds and the remaining balance, 49.79 million, coming from the Charlotte County Interlocal Agreement. The Phase 3C project uh, currently has 26.55 million earmarked from the district, 2.5 million earmarked from the Alternative Water Supply Fund, and the remaining balance of uh, 41.2 million from the Sarasota County Interlocal Agreement. The Peace River Regional Reservoir Number 3 it's our largest amount of funding. Currently, 115.7 million has been earmarked from the district. And then another 24.8 million is coming from FDEP. 10.05 million is from the Alternative Water Supply Fund that we found out about in April um, for the district forwarding that application to FDEP. And then 14.75 million is for the Resiliency Florida program. Those are grants and then 10 million in legislation appropriation funds and the authority uh, project participants would be uh, paying uh, 224.57 million at the current estimate. For the PRF expansion, the treatment, we currently do not have district funding for this project um, or alternative water supply grant funding, but we are pursuing both uh, for fiscal year 2026. That project is currently at $168.1 million. I would like to entertain any questions the board has regarding uh, the request to submit the applications and the ranking of the projects. Okay, board members, any questions? Mr. Knowles? Okay. Hear none, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Motion to authorize submittal of the authority's FY 2026 cooperative funding initiative applications to the Southwest Florida Water Management District for four regional projects and approve the recommended project cooperative funding ranking. Okay, I have a motion and a second. If there's no further comments or questions. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed like sign. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you, Mike. Great, thank you. Okay, now we'll move to agenda item number two. Look. Yes, sir. Take care. Yep. Yeah. All right, Mike. Thank you, Commissioner. It's all yours, buddy. Thank you. Uh, for the record, Mike Knowles with Authority Staff presenting regular agenda item number two. 
This is an update to four of your capital improvement projects that are currently underway. This presentation is for information purposes only, but as more of your projects move through design and into construction, if there's any information that you'd like added to future project updates, I'd appreciate uh, that feedback. I'll be covering the four projects that we just approved for submittal on uh, CFI applications to the district, uh, starting with the phase 2B pipeline. This pipeline, uh, just going on an overview of each of the projects before covering the current status and schedule for these projects. But the phase 2B pipeline is located in northwest Charlotte County. As we look at the project area for that pipeline, uh, the pipeline starts at Hillsborough Boulevard at the intersection of Sears Drive at a metering station that the authority already has. Proceeds uh, west on Hillsborough across US 41 and along Chancellor Boulevard before turning south parallel to Campbell Street and a proposed easement through the Mayaka State Forest that we're working on and then uh, in a proposed drill across the Mayaka River before terminating at the Charlotte County Gulf Cove Booster Station. To date, our progressive design bill contractor, Woodruff & Sons, has installed 1.6 miles of 42-inch diameter pipe and also 1.3 miles of parallel smaller diameter water main funded through a separate purchase order with Charlotte County. The project began construction February of, 20, uh, February of this year, and we are still on track and on budget for a completion of March of 2026. We may be coming back to the board for an interlocal agreement revision if Charlotte County wishes to add additional parallel water main to this project. For the phase 3C project, the pipeline <coughs> is located in northern Sarasota County. As we look at the project area, that pipeline starts at Clark Road near Cowpen Slough at a uh, existing above grade uh, uh, infrastructure manifold that the county or authority has. Proceeds up Cowpen Slough through easements and then uh, north along Lorraine Road right away and future Lorraine Road extension right away until it reaches Fruitville Road where it will terminate in the connection to a Sarasota County transmission main and also leave a stub out for the continuation of that 42 inch diameter pipe north in the future. Our progressive design build contractor, Garney Construction to date has installed 2.9 miles of 42 inch diameter pipe starting kind of in the middle of our pipeline project that's where we could get the design completed, get all the permits, and we had access to the land through public right away. So they're advancing north first as part of the initial uh, step of this project. The second part of the phase 3C project is actually located in central Sarasota County at the Carleton Water Treatment Plant. The authority owns two of the three storage tanks that you see on the uh, northern side of the Carleton facility. This project is looking to also add a uh, fourth tank or a third authority tank at 5 million gallons and also make pumping improvements to that station to account for additional allocation for Sarasota County. The design is currently at 30% for those improvements. And construction began uh, October of last year on the pipeline portion. We would be looking to, at the next board meeting in October, bring forward an amendment for the design to take that pump station and storage component from 30% design to the 100% final design. Uh, we are still on track and on budget for a substantial completion in June of 2026. I do want to point out uh, the two of the benefits that we've really seen from going with progressive design build on these two pipeline projects. Uh, one of them is the schedule. By far, if we had gone with a traditional design bid build, neither one of these projects would be out to bid right now because uh, you've got to have typically the design in hand, easements, permits. We're still acquiring some easements on 3C, and we're still working with the core for permitting the micro river crossing on 2B. So schedule-wise, we wouldn't have over four miles of pipe in the ground at this point if we hadn't gone progressive design build. The other benefit is going with an early procurement with owner direct purchase. Not only do we have the sales tax savings on the majority of the pipe products, uh, but timing the market was uh, critical too as costs have gone up more than 5% since we purchased this material about a year and a half ago. So altogether the realized savings from owner direct purchase early procurement package is about $5.2 million between both projects. For the Peace River Regional Reservoir Number 3, or PR3, that's located in southwest DeSoto County at the RV Griffin uh, Reserve and Peace River Facility site. 
you could see on this area, we've got reservoir number one at half a billion gallons, reservoir number two at six billion, and then you could see our proposed reservoir three at nine billion, just southwest of reservoir number two. The other components of this uh, pipeline, as our senior administrator uh, pointed out earlier, are the river intake pump station and the new reservoir pump station, an additional large diameter pipe that interconnects these facilities, 84 inch down to 48 inch in diameter. So the projects are divided up into volumes of work. The first volume of work is focused on the reservoir itself, the storage component. We're proposing or planning on having 100% design plans in December for that component of the work and also pre-qualifying contractors to bid on that volume of work. Then we would uh, plan to bring in April to the board the bids from those contractors with construction starting as early as June of next year aimed at a final completion of January of 2028. For the other portion of the PR3 project, the pump station design and, a, and the associated large diameter piping, we're on a slightly different track because we're working with our construction manager at risk, Archer Western, on that. And we're aiming for 100% design plans in February 2025. That gives us time to work out some value engineering opportunities such as uh, open cutting across King's Highway, which we discussed at the last board meeting. Uh, still aiming to bring at the April board meeting the guaranteed maximum price from that construction manager at risk for consideration for the board. Uh, looking at starting construction as early as June of next year with uh, substantial completion aimed at June of 2028 for those projects or those portions of it. The last project, Peace River Facility Expansion, also located at the RV Griffith and Peace River Facility. As we take a look at the plant, the one closest to the bottom of your screen, I'll label these, is our plant number one. We are facing north, followed by plant number two, and then we've got plants three and four with adjoining walls. The Peace River facility expansion is proposed just north of plants three and four. And we have a rendering here from our progressive design build contractor, Warren Smith, of what this facility could look like at the north end of our treatment facility. The schedule for this project is to complete the guaranteed maximum price design by February of 2025, bring the guaranteed maximum price of the board in April for consideration with construction starting as early as June 2025, with substantial completion of that project aimed at December 2027. Um, as Mr. Coates indicated, some of the long lead items already discussed by our progressive design builder are the electrical components, and that's at least one of the low-hanging fruit that we would like to uh, get early because some of those lead times can be up to three years for the components. So with that, that is all I have as far as a project update. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Gentlemen, you have any questions? Okay, hear none. Thank you. Danger of going underwater. <laughs> right across the Peace River and Horse Creek this morning, they got a lot coming. Yeah. Morning, Mr. Chairman. I'm Jim Guida, Director of Water Resources and Planning. And as Doug was implying, this is the most exciting part of all presentations. I just meant because of the tropical storm. We'll I'd talk about it later, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be covering uh, this information on water supply conditions. Um, this is for inf information purposes. Uh, no action is required. Uh, first, we'll cover rainfall conditions uh, up until July 20th. Uh, we'll also cover uh, river flows, withdrawals, uh, and storage conditions at our facilities at the Peace River facility uh, through July 20th. And then we'll talk about regional deliveries for the month of June. So our first graphic here is the uh, average rainfall that's fallen in the Peace River Basin. Uh, this is covering the last two years. The blue dashed line that you see at the top here is historical average monthly rainfall. The uh, green line below it is actual rainfall that has been received. 
Um, we had above average rainfall back in January, um, which actually was, was good news for us because it actually helped us maintain storage uh, through the wintertime quite well. Um, but after that, from February through May, as everyone knows, it's been extremely dry. Um, by the time we got to June, we actually got, uh, with the summer rainfall picking up, we actually got quite a bit of flow. But in July, it dropped again. So as of July 20th, it had dropped off quite a bit. Um, obviously, with what we just received here in the past few days up within the basin, there's been a tremendous increase in flows, which is, of course has implications on our water supply conditions. This provides you river flows for the last two years. Um, at the very bottom in red is our minimum flow, below which we're not allowed to withdraw water at all. Um, and then what you have with the blue dotted line, again, is the long-term average conditions and the green is the actual flow. So again, you can follow the same general pattern that in January we actually ended up with quite high flows, which helped us out a lot, but then it dropped below the long-term average and to, to we got to the point where they were extremely low and couldn't even withdraw uh, for a period of time. Um, and then it started to pick up in June, it picked up again through July 20th, and again, we are seeing tremendous increases in flows now. River withdrawals uh, for the last two and a half years are shown here. Um, we were able to withdraw for a good solid 11 months consecutively between June 2023 and April of 2024. Um, so that was uh, somewhat unusual that we were able to do it for 11 consecutive months, but that was helpful to us. Um, in April, we pulled about 4 million gallons a day. By May, we took no water off the river at all. Uh, but then with June, we again, we picked back up and we were at about 16.6 .6 MGD. And then we were about 55 MGD coming out by the uh, time July 20th came along. Surface water storage, um, this is in our reservoir systems. This is shown over the last three years. Um, you can see that typical seasonal pattern. We fill up during the rainy season. We then take, take the reservoirs down during the dry season, and the pattern continues each year. You can see here in our last year, actually, it's a much longer time period during which we were able to actually store higher quantities of water. Um, over this last winter time. Um, by the end of June, surface water storage was about 4.6 billion gallons. And in July, it was about 5.2 billion gallons. That was just about the same as it was last year. Uh, again, surface water storage we anticipate is going to be, as with the withdrawals, we're gonna increase withdrawals, we'll increase storage in the coming weeks and, and months, most likely with all the, the river, uh, rain that we just received and, and the flow in the river. Aquifer storage and recovery system storage uh, stayed relatively flat. Um, the total volume in storage is actually at the top here. Um, and then the actual usable storage is shown here in red. Um, we had uh, June storage held steady uh, at about 8.3 billion gallons uh, and the total storage and about 5 billion gallons uh, for usable storage. And the surface water continued to be able to meet all our demands this year. So we did not need to use aquifer storage and recovery uh, as a supply source. This is our estimated days of st uh, supply storage that we have. Um, this is as of the end of June. Um, we had about 4.6 billion gallons of surface water, as I mentioned, about 5 billion gallons in our ASR system of usable supply, so combined about 9.6 billion gallons. So we translate that into how much water do we have stored based on two things. The first actually is how much do we have at our average annual usage of 30 million gallons a day, which here as is shown is about 319 days or about 10 and a half months worth of storage. And then we also show the number based on what our master water supply contract allocated quantity of 34.7 would translate to. And that again is about 276 days or about nine months worth of uh, stored supply right now. So overall, we are in very good condition uh, as of the end of June, but we're going to be in a much better condition as we move forward with uh, taking advantage of all the flows that are in the river. Switching to regional production. This is our total regional production across the entire re region. So the table includes authority and member customer uh, water supplies, water supply capacity for the region uh, for the month of June. The combined regional capacity for the region is 104.7 million gallons a day. And in June, the authority delivered 30.91 MGD to the region. The members and customers delivered 58.25 million gallons a day. Total regional production was 89.2 million gallons a day in June. Uh, of that, just short of four MGD uh, was delivered by Manatee County to non-authority customers. That's Longboat Key, City of Bradenton, and Palmetto. Um, so total June demand authority members and customers combined was 85.5 million gallons per day. 
And we'll just go through member by member use in June. In June 24, um, Charlotte has purchased about 13.5 million gallons a day from the authority to serve its West Central service area. Charlotte supplied 0.73 MGD to its burnt store area in South County, total use of about 4.2 MGD. Overall, the county used 74% of its total wide, uh, countywide uh, capacity, uh, about 84% of its Peace River capacity, about 23% of burnt store. DeSoto County, DeSoto purchased about 0.7 million gallons a day from the authority, self-supplied about 0.3 million gallons a day from its DCI facility for a total use of 1.02 MGD. Overall, the county used about 71% of its total countywide supply. Manatee County produced 50.25 million gallons a day from its water supply facilities. 42.7 of that uh, was used to serve their retail customers. 3.6 MGD of that was supplied to those wholesale customers of theirs. And about 3.9 was supplied to Sarasota County. Sarasota County purchased 15.2 MGD from the authority, self-supplied about 4.2, imported about 4.1 MGD, and total use was about 23.5 million gallons a day. Overall, they're using about 70% of their total system-wide capacity. City of Northport purchased 1.5 MGD from the authority, self-supplied 2.77, and exchanged a quarter million gallons a day. Uh, for a total use of 4 MGD during the month of June. They're at about 65% of total capacity. Switching gears here, this is just regional demand uh, by water year back to 2013, and then the last in red is actually the running 12-month average of what use has been. Uh, this is a 10-year period. This includes all the regional deliveries. It also includes uh, what Manatee provides to non-customers. But as of June 2024, the running 12-month average for the region was 87.15 million gallons a day. That's about a 2.5% increase versus water year 2023. Overall, the region is at about 83% of available capacity. And this last chart here is just regional utilization in the month of June, uh, broken out by use in a pie chart here. Um, breakdown of that is total use of 89.2 MGD in June for everyone. Um, about 85% of the regional capacity, leaving about 15 and a half MGD of unused regional capacity in June. And with that, that's the overview for this month. Okay. Board members, you have any questions? Mr. Jim? Yeah. Thank right. you. Thank you, buddy. Okay. That brings us to, make sure I'm not missing nothing here, but I believe that brings us to our general counsel's report. I don't have anything up further. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, executive director's report i uh, just to say uh, thank you again uh, for all the support these years and uh, i've certainly appreciated working here um, and hopefully uh, i'm sure richard will do a fantastic job for you so thank you very much okay we appreciate you mike um see under chairman's report i just got i want to just say that our our former senior director is with us today mr pat lehman it was good to see you and i uh, see that you're still doing good and and uh um, hope you enjoy retirement and i'm sorry you had to get up early to get here today but uh <laughs> and uh we also have two former board members that are gracious with their presence today commissioner mayo in the back and commissioner daughtery and I think they, we can safely say they identify now as Peace River, Minnesota Water Supply groupies. <laughs> Good to see you all. Glad you come. Um, at this time, any board members have any comments? Okay. I think you have public comment, though, right? Yeah, I, I okay. do. I do. Don't get ahead of me, Doug. Uh, I'm just making sure. Okay. All right. Everybody good? Okay. Uh, this time, I'd like to call up Miss Katie Knowles. Good morning. My name is Katie Knowles. I'm currently a sophomore at Suncoast Polytechnical High School in Sarasota. My experience at the Authority Summer Shadowing Program has pushed me to continue my studies in engineering. I got to visit the facility where water is being drawn from the Peace River, have a walkthrough on the process of treating and testing that water, and observe the construction of one of the pipelines that will supply essential water to many homes like mine. 
As someone who is interested in pursuing engineering, I thank the board for supporting the Authority Summer Shadowing Program, allowing high schoolers like me the opportunity to experience what the Authority does firsthand. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Katie, would your, would Katie, would your dad happen to be Mike? Yeah. Okay, thank, thank goodness you took after your mother. <laughs> okay. Ouch. Uh, second comment, Emily? My name is Emily Knowles. I am a senior at Suncoast Polytechnic High School. I have recently attended the Peace River Facility Expansion Meeting and received a tour of the 3C pipeline being constructed in Sarasota, Florida. Being here has taught me a lot about how this particular line of work and how it works and flows and how that in every single project there is a lot of work and a lot of hard work going on. I have been given an experience most high schoolers do not. So I am I would like to thank the board for supporting the shadowing program. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, Zachary Hudson. Uh, good morning, Chairman. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, I am currently, my name is Zachary Hudson, and I'm currently a junior at Florida Gulf Coast University. And for the past few months, I've been able to uh, participate in an internship with the authority. And I would first and foremost like to thank you all for that opportunity. Um, this is my second summer now with the authority, and last summer I had the opportunity to design a, a few hydraulic models for the existing pipelines overseen by the authority. And this summer, I was given the opportunity to help inspect two new pipelines that are currently being installed, the 3C and the 2B projects. Uh, thanks to this internship, I've been able to more fully grasp the dedication that countless individuals uh, have put into the authority and its goals to deliver clean water to residents such as myself and millions more. And I'm sure this opportunity will undoubtedly help me fulfill my aspirations of becoming an engineer one day. And I would just like to thank you again for this uh, internship program, and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Mike Cordan. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. I uh, wanted to, I'm representing Brown and Caldwell, Mike Condren. And for the past two plus years, we've been serving uh, you and your staff um, on a variety of projects related to your capital program as your owner's agent. And it's been a privilege to get that. Uh, get that work going and, and support you each and every day. I wanted to take this opportunity to recognize uh, how much I'm going to personally miss Mike Coates on his departure. Um, I first met Mike about 18 years ago, and at the time uh, we were working, the comp that company and I were working on um, the integrated regional water supply plan, and Mike was new, new to the authority, and we were sitting sh literally shoulder to shoulder working on edits through this pretty massive document. It's a memory that goes back all those 18 years ago and, and then over the course of the past 18 years to continue that relationship working with you, Mike. I, for one, am going to miss working with you and hopefully we'll still see you around and, and get plenty of photographs of your, of your travel. So I just wanted to say thanks for the opportunity to work with you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mike. And last but not least, Mr. Pat, you're up. <laughs> yeah, good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. It's really nice to be on this side of the dais and at this podium <laughs> under public comment, as Mr. Coates will soon learn. But it's certainly been a privilege, a pleasure over the years to work with Mr. Coates, Mr. Anderson, and I can assure you that I just wanted to commend Mr. Coates his knowledge, his dedication, his leadership over the years has gotten you well established for the future. Certainly what you accomplished today, getting the, the contract uh, amended, is just tremendous. So I appreciate your leadership, and I welcome you now to the Alumni Club. <laughs> and I'm glad that the, the board recognizes the continuity, the importance of this organization, and I know that Mr. Anderson is the right selection to continue this authority as a model recognized statewide for its uh, recognition for water supply for all your residents for the future. 
God bless you as you continue your mission. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pat. Okay. Um, announcements. Our next meeting will be October the 2nd, 2024, 9.30 a.m. at the Charlotte County, Charlotte County Administrator Center on Murdoch Circle. And then um, future board meeting would be December the 4th in downtown beautiful DeSoto County. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Yeah, before you gavel out, I just, you know, listening to the students come up and speak, especially the high school students, um, it was impressive uh, that they came to the meeting today and talked about their experiences. Um, we rolled out a program a few months ago called the, the Charlotte you know, Junior Commission Program. It was a first, uh, it, was, it, was a, it was kind of a pilot, um, and it worked out really well. We had juniors and seniors from the high school come in and, and act as commissioners, and um, they went to various meetings over a period of time, and then they ended with a mock commission meeting. It was really, really good, so I would encourage um, our member counties here maybe to look into that program. Um, it was actually brought to the board by our county attorney who found it at another, I think up in Tennessee, they did it. And we borrowed the program, kind of made it our own, but it was really good to get the next generation of leadership involved. And even if it's not maybe in a role as an elected official, you know, they work with staff too. And I, I, I heard some of the students talk about maybe being engineers or, or, or working somehow to help, you know, give back to their community. So. I think it's a really important that, you know, anytime there's an opportunity to engage with the next generation, we do so. So I would encourage you guys to look at that junior commission program. It's really good, easy to put on, and I got a lot out of it as a commissioner too. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. All Chair. Right. Well, thank you for sharing. Yeah. All right. Is there any other business to come before the board at this time? Hear none, we stand adjourned. Thank you all for coming.